in memory of the courage of those who have struggled for freedom, the persistence of those who struggle for justice, and the love of those who built beloved communities to carry on the light of hope. And would you please stand now for the affirmation of covenant? <coughs> Thank you, Debbie. You all may be seated. I am 39 and a half. That is significant, not because I am almost 40, but because I am now the same age my roommate Susan was when I first moved to Arkansas. Susan described me as a sheltered, shackled, and timid being. I know so because she used those words when she addressed me like, oh, Rebecca, my timid, sweet little baby. As a very strong, confident, recently graduated 23-year-old, I made the educated assumption that she was crazy. <laughs> little did I know that pivotal role Susan would play in my life. Susan an eagerly self-pronounced 39 and a half year old, she was a bit of a misfit in our community, just in terms of her age and her previous experiences. While most of the residential volunteers at the ranch, and there are some here today, <laughs> I'm so excited you're here. Uh, most of us were just out of high school or out of college or on the other side of retirement. But Susan had been the senior vice president of the Northern Division of NBC. She had multiple houses, multiple BMWs, and very nice things. Susan, Susan had worked her way up the ladder in the pursuit of happiness and success, and ultimately her freedom. She had power, wealth, influence, connections, resources well beyond her needs as a single woman, and she literally left it behind in a desperate search for truth and meaning. She shared little about her career aside from her frustration that she felt she, as a woman, had to outperform the men in order to even be seen as an equal, and all the while having to smile and be sweet and look beautiful while doing it. She talked about the necessity for a woman to have the ability to both shed and harness the elements of sexual harassment that were par for the course. Susan had a flair for drama, but I believe her when she told me that one day she just snapped. She said some obscenities and made a scene as she showed herself out. It was not hard to imagine that scene. <laughs> And it was not hard to understand the emotion and the exhaustion that fueled it. She walked out of that life seemingly cold turkey, aside from a ritual on Sunday mornings when she would force me to get in her car and go to Conway because it was the closest place she could get a Starbucks and a New York Times. The ranch as it was back then, offered her a thousand new experiences, which she consumed with a ravenous appetite. Of course, she had never milked a goat or pulled a carrot from the ground or shoveled enormous piles of water buffalo manure. She was like a kid in this candy store. For her, it was not only freedom from the corporate grind, but also a newfound freedom, like many of us were finding, that connected us with systems that we'd been a part of and perpetuated without fully understanding them. Despite our distances, our differences, which were many, 
I loved being Susan's roommate. It was highly entertaining. I think Susan found me highly entertaining too, but for completely different reasons. A couple of weeks in, she presented me with a list of her goals for corrupting me. <laughs> I was far too wholesome. And to be fair, I was at that point. Susan was sure she was just the bad influence I needed to become a better person. Her list, which she literally wrote on my whiteboard above my bed, was things like drinking wine, smoke a cigarette, cheating, playing hooky from work, not setting my alarm, and other reckless things like making no plans for a weekend. <sighs> Live a little, she would say. Geez, what is the worst that can happen? You are so safe here. I did not see it at the time, but for the most part, she was right. I am sad to say, I didn't do a single thing on Susan's list for me during our months together. Disappointing, right? Susan reconnected with her high school sweetheart and left the ranch early. She was eager to move in with this 40-year-old bike messenger in San Francisco to live above a garage and work part-time at a yoga studio. She left me all her really nice things. I decided to extend my time at the ranch for a whole nother year because I knew I had so much to learn, and I did. I felt safe there. I was safe to explore, safe to ask questions, safe to get, all these, get to know all these different people that were living there on a deeper level. I was safe to learn, safe to try. Safe to be vulnerable, to disagree, and to change my mind. I felt a freedom there I had never felt before. A freedom to be openly myself on a journey for truth and meaning. When I left the ranch, it was scary to leave that behind. I found that feeling the day I met my husband, Mike. I found that feeling the day I came to this church. That ranch community I had there feels a lot like this UU community. A diversity of people and thinking and backgrounds and spirituality and potluck dishes. The same underlying feeling of safety was here. Feeling that it's okay to be you that you will be accepted, but you won't just be affirmed, you will also be engaged and challenged. You will be asked to share and explain and grow and explore. Susan had a way of asking me questions that I'd just never experienced before. When you live in an intentional community, there are many group decisions many group discussions. So whether it was about something benign, like should I go with this group to the watershed? Or do you believe in salvation? She had this way of cutting into a conversation to ask me, is that what you want? Is that what you think? Is that what you believe? No one had ever put me on the spot like that before in a way that actually required me to go beyond my script or off book from what I had been taught and told. If I would flounder here or there, she would just cut me off and say, no, 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 I don't care about what so-and-so is doing. I don't care about your parents or your church, what they say. I would like to hear what Rebecca thinks about that. And though sometimes I felt like she was trying to pick a fight, she truly never was. She was just genuinely asking me to speak for myself. There was a newfound freedom in that, moving off the script, away from an expectation 
to know the rule or be a people pleaser. There was a freedom in finding my own voice, but it was also, and still is, especially from a pulpit, a bit terrifying to use your own voice. With Susan, no matter what answer I gave, a yes or a no, she would essentially say, good, act accordingly. She was not free from good heckled, good humored heckling, but she was always free of judgment. My journey to this moment could have been very different without the whirlwind that was Susan and that space I found at the ranch. I am so grateful. Some of you perhaps were born into UU, but the majority of us, we traveled to get here. We journeyed from one faith or another, in and out and round about. Some of us made departures from our first faiths while clanging cymbals and banging drums and showing ourselves out. Some of us departed silently, like a cat in the night. Perhaps you've held on to a mask to wear to make it easier when you return there. Some of us, on the other hand, have woven a tapestry of your first faith and this you, you one, each beautifully complementing and strengthening the other. Either way, we have worked to get here. We have peeked over the metaphorical fences of other faiths. We have taken a stroll in the grass to see if it really is green. Maybe we've stayed to enjoy a picnic or two. We've gathered seeds from the things there that fed us, and we carry them deep in our pockets. We have explored, questioned, we've doubted, at times, we have felt alone, anxious, radical. We have traveled to get here, and here we are. We choose to be here because we've felt something. We've felt enlightened, enriched, heard, seen, humbled, encouraged. There is something here that allows us to feel authentic, safe, free to be. It's our fourth principle. You use have named this journey. It is a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. And we don't have to do it alone or in fear. We get to do this together. We do it together in this sacred space that we have inherited, a sacred space that we perpetually steward and recreate. We, as loving, angry, gentle people, we get to do this together. We grant ourselves and each other a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. What a gift that is. But living this principle involves accountability. Thus do we covenant with each other, correct? It involves open conversation, opposing views, pointed questions, thinking outside the box, being vulnerable, being generous. It will most definitely involve varied levels of understanding of Robert's rules of order. <laughs> a free and responsible search must have patience, humor, and above all else, trust. Did you think I was going to say love? I thought about it. But trust is a more specific shared integrity that can be built over time and broken in an instant. Trust is an intimate form of love in action. And without it, our search will neither be free nor responsible. 
We must build on that which we have here already to get our house in good, trustworthy order. And then we must each look in the mirror and ask ourselves, how are we yet sheltered, shackled, timid? What can we do to continue on our journeys with those things in mind so that we can find our voices and then amplify the truth and meaning through the drumbeat of this beloved community? Because thus do we covenant with each other. If I could write Susan a letter today, it might go something like this. My dearest, tiny Susan, you will be pleased to know that I have tasted many wines since our last days together. While I do not care for cigarettes, I would love to share my most recent adventures of playing hooky from work. You should know that I still consider my alarm clock a friend, but it is not needed very often now that I have children. Yes, I decided to have them after all. Now I haven't mastered it, but the days with no plans and no obligations are indeed by far the best for opening myself up to the possibilities that the universe might extend my way. Thank you for corrupting the me I was. I'm doing my best to extend the favor to others. With love, from the bottom of my 39 and a half year old heart, amen. These are the words we say each week as a community. Say them with me. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering, honor all beings. I invite Debbie to come up. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Amen. Amen. Blessed be. Go in peace. <laughs>